It's Friday morning and we're on Melrose Mountain. I went out of Florida thinking I was done with hurricanes, but the current path of a storm in the Gulf right now is up through Atlanta and into the Carolinas. Well, nevertheless, it will be diminished a great deal by the time it gets to us. I don't look forward to be a major event in our lives, uh, but it is ironic that uh, the hurricane is headed this way uh, or the tropical storm is headed this way. The headlines lately have been uh, really tragic. The church bus with senior adults upon it blowing a tire, six people killed, many others injured seriously, people in other vehicles also injured, and, uh, some killed. It uh, has been a number of events in the Carolinas that have been in our local news about uh, domestic violence and shootings and killings, young children playing with guns and you know, losing their lives. Uh, it seems like we talk about prayer, but we don't really pray. Uh, one of the things that's made uh, a great impact in my life since retirement has been time to pray, uh, time to stop from all of the activities of the day and not long prayers and not getting on my knees as some of the previous uh, theologians have done and praying all day. I've never done that, but certainly just taking the time to pray for others, others that I don't even know. Uh, it says very clearly in James chapter 5, verse 13, if anyone among you is suffering, he must pray. If anyone is cheerful, he is to sing. Is anyone among you sick? Then he should call upon the elders of the church. And they're to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered with faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. It's an interesting statement of prayer, and a lot of people have taken it out of context of the entire scriptures. We know that not everybody that we pray for is going to get well. We know that not everyone that has enough faith will get well. But we also need to understand that the very fact that we prayed is going to help the situation. I know many times people have prayed for me and I've felt their prayers. Even though the result may have not been for a healing, uh, but I felt God's presence. So we can be assured that when we pray, God makes his presence known to those that we're praying for. For those that were killed in the accident, they've left behind families. Uh, for those that are going through difficult times, they feel God's comfort and his presence. Uh, let me just give you three principles of prayer that I've found in my own life that I believe God really believes. He's not impressed with our eloquence, but rather with our sincerity. You see, when we pray with eloquence, it's for the people that are listening, not for God. But when we pray with sincerity, he knows our hearts and he knows that we're sincere about our prayers. It's not about length. You see, I, I don't think that God is necessarily impressed with lengthy prayers, but the fervency. That goes beyond sincerity. That is the urgency that we feel, the, the depth of our feelings. Thirdly, it's not out of obligation. We don't pray because we know that this is what we're called to do as Christians, but we do it out of love. Our love of God and our love of the people that we're praying for. So three things, not eloquence, but sincerity, not length, but fervency, and not obligation, but out of love. We need to empathize and have compassion. We need to have love and faith in our prayers. I hope that as you get a little bit older and as you see all of the needs of people around you and you realize how many urgent needs there are for prayer and troubles and sickness and all types of events, there is a call for Christians to pray not eloquently, not lengthy, not out of obligation, 
but out of sincerity, fervency, and love, with empathy and compassion and lots of faith, that although God may not heal the situation, he will be with the people that are going through it. I hope that you'll pray today. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. God bless you. Have a great day.